Okay, in this episode, I'm going to talk about uh, one of the most famous uh, matching mechanisms in the house allocation problem. It's called serial dictatorship. Uh, well, you may wonder why we call it dictatorship, you'll see. Uh, how does it work? Well, first of all, this is a mechanism, right? It's a matching mechanism, meaning you can apply it to any house allocation problem, independent of the number of houses, independent of number of uh, individuals, and independent of their preferences. What you're supposed to do is just first ask the individuals their preferences over houses, and then second, specify an order order of what? Order over individuals, meaning who is going to choose first, who is going to choose second, who is going to choose third, etc. All right, so after choosing this order, well then the first individual is going to receive his or her best house. Then the second individual is going to receive his or her best among the remaining houses and then the third individual is going to get his or her best among the remaining houses and so on and so forth okay well it is serial dictatorship because you know everybody gets his best uh, but the thing is everybody gets his best among the remaining houses so we actually do it in a series and so uh, it's named uh, serial dictatorship well, applications, actually this is a very easy to imply, uh, I'm sorry, very easy to apply mechanism. And in fact, uh, a lot of universities, a lot of uh, places use it for office allocations. For example, universities apply it for office allocations of professors. And well, the question is how do they specify order? Well, some places just randomly pick an order, meaning everybody has an equal opportunity of being the first, the second. So they just uh, uh, toss a coin and then determines who's going to move first, who's going to move second. This is probably the most uh, fair one. Um, some other places basically follow uh, seniority. So uh, for example, uh, professors choose first and then associate professors, assistant professors maybe, and then teaching assistants. Okay. Well, uh, here the uh, choice of an order doesn't really matter. Uh, uh, I mean, whatever the choice uh, you can apply this rule and, 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 and get probably, obviously, a different outcome. Uh, so in that sense, a, a choice of an order is going to influence the outcome. Uh, but again, you know, you, you can choose any order you like. Um, well, New York uh, City's school choice system was, uh, at least, uh, uh, using this system. And, and the Columbia and the Harvard University housing system uh, was using, I'm not sure about Columbia, but Harvard was, at least when I was there in 2015, they were still using the uh, serial dictatorship on the housing, um, not for the students at least, but for the, uh, you know, the PhD students and the visitors. Uh, they were randomly selecting an order and then you were choosing uh, your, your housing. So there are you know, a bunch of uh, applications out there. Uh, mainly because, again, as I said, it's, it's very easy to implement, but also has a very nice properties. So these two theorems, I'm not going to prove them, uh, but it's important to know the serial dictatorship mechanism is in fact proto efficient, meaning whatever house allocation problem you throw, well, whatever uh, order you, you, you specify or choose, it's going to lead to a proto efficient matching. Okay, that's a very strong uh, property, which is good. The second important uh, property is that the serial dictatorship mechanism is strategy proof. Once again, regardless of the order you specify and the regardless of the house allocation you problem you throw at, well, the individuals, once they're asked to reveal their preferences over houses, they have no incentive to lie. They're not going to benefit. All right, so it's strategy proof. All right, well, here I have one numerical example and let's see if really the outcome is pretty efficient and strategy proof. All right, so we have three individuals, three houses, and these are the individual's preferences. Let's suppose, let's fix it. And the individuals truthfully 
uh, tells us that these are their preferences. All right, so these are true preferences and they truthfully reveal uh, those preferences. Okay, well, what is going to be the outcome? Well, remember the, the, the first thing first is that the order. All right, so the order, let's suppose individual three should go first and then individual two and then individual one. Okay, so that's the order we announce. Okay, well then, according to this, individual three is going to be the first guy who is going to get his house. And according to his preferences, his best option is house one. So therefore, individual three is going to be matched with house one. Okay, and then individual two is the second guy. Well, individual two prefers house two. Is it available? Yes, it is. So therefore, he's going to get house two. And then finally, individual one is to pick his house. Well, he prefers house one. Okay, but the thing is, it's not available because individual three got it. Okay, so his second best is house two. Sorry, it's not available. Well, the only available house is house three, which is your worst, we know, but I'm sorry. Uh, this is the house you're going to be matched. Okay, uh, because unfortunately you were the last to choose. Okay, so this is the matching uh, for this specific uh, house allocation problem. All right, well, the question is, uh, is this proto efficient? All right, very good point. Hmm, can I find another matching? So this is mu, okay? Can I find another matching V? Uh, which is going to specify uh, some house for uh, individual three, some house for individual two, all right? And then some house for individual three. Okay, uh, but remember, uh, if mu is not proto-efficient, that means there is another matching which is going to proto-dominate mu, which means uh, according to this new matching, each individual is going to get slightly better off, all right? Either the same house or a better house. And at least one agent should be getting better house. Obviously, if, if V is equal to mu, everybody is indifferent between these two matchings. So V does not predominate mu because they're exactly the same matching. So we should be finding another matching. Well, the thing is, uh, player three or individual three, he's getting his first best. All right. If I want to find a better matching, a predominating matching, I still have to give him house one. If I do not give him house one, for example, if I give him house three or house two, okay, well, he will certainly not prefer V over mu. Okay, so therefore I cannot say V predominates mu. All right, so for that reason, I have to give him at least his house, uh, at least his uh, matched house, H1 here. Okay, well, given that, what about player two? Well, player two is already getting his best house here. So therefore, I cannot give him H1 here or H3. If I do, V is going to be worse for him than mu. Okay, but I am looking for some matching which is going to predominate mu. All right, so therefore I have to give him H2 as well. But you know, here's the problem once I give H1 to third player, H2 to second player, you see there's no more house. I have to give H3 to the first guy. And so, you know what? If I am looking for predominating uh, matching, I will actually end up the matching which is exactly mu, which is exactly what serial dictatorship gives. And so that means I cannot find, we can't, I mean, I can't find a matching V which predominates uh, mu. Okay, so that is not a proof that serial dictatorship is a proto-efficient mechanism. That is just an example to convince ourselves that in fact uh, 
proto dictatorship gives an efficient uh, uh, sort of uh, matching for one specific problem. But trust me, thanks to this theorem, whatever problem you pick, five individuals, five houses, and different preference relation, of obviously the matching is going to be different, but you can actually show that that matching is also pretty efficient, okay? With exactly similar kind of uh, argumentation. Well, what is next? Let's talk about strategy proofness. Is it really strategy proof? I mean, can somebody, I mean, I'm not going to prove that uh, a serial dictatorship mechanism is strategy proof, but I am going to show that in fact, players can't really uh, benefit from lying. Well, here, if you look at this matching outcome, player three or individual three is getting his best anyhow, right? I mean, by lying, he's not going to get anything better than H1. I mean, it's, it's, it's his first best. Same for individual two. She's also getting her first best. So these two guys have no incentive to lie, no incentive to say something else other than their true preferences. So therefore here, if anybody has an incentive to deviate or lie, well, it is player one or individual one. So the question is, for example, if he declares instead something like this, H2, H1, H3, or I don't know, maybe something like this, H3, H1, H2. I mean, by declaring something else, he has a hope to change the outcome. Is it possible? That's the question. Uh, well, I mean, you may be actually thinking uh, faster than my speaking ability and say, boy, boy, I mean, this is impossible. Why? Well, because player one or individual one is the lost guy who decides what to get. And according to those preferences, given that player two and three declares this way, house one and house two are going to be gone way before player three's turn is, is, is coming up. And so that means player one or individual one will have only one option, which is house three. And so regardless of what he declares, okay, regardless of what he declares, he's going to get house three, meaning by lying, individual three has no option to change the matching outcome. And hence, telling the truth is, I mean, lying is not a better strategy in that sense, right? And so telling the truth is a dominant strategy. Well, I mean, here, I didn't show that it is a dominant strategy because uh, what if, what if, uh, Showing something strategy proof is more complicated than what I'm arguing here. But again, I do not want to go into the details of strategy proofness, uh, dominant strategy, uh, 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 etc. Because I will talk about all these in much more detail when I talk about mechanism design. But I just want to want to sort of give you a, a taste, a flavor of what we really mean by strategy proof mechanism. And I hope it was clear. Um, well, obviously when I do all these analysis, uh, meaning checking proto efficiency, strategy proofness, it is very critical that individuals declaration of their preferences are not going to influence the order. So order is something that is going, going to be fixed throughout the entire mechanism and it's going to be fixed by the mechanism designer or by the matchmaker or wh whoever the authority is. Remember we're talking about uh, centralized markets and so here in this house allocation problem wh whoever the, the authority is going to be determining the order and the order is independent of the agent's declared preferences. All right. Under this assumption, it really doesn't change. Uh, uh, I mean, it doesn't going to benefit individuals uh, uh, lying. And so therefore, a serial dictatorship is a strategy proof mechanism. I hope that was clear.